boys. Uh, Ma'am, on behalf of the students, you're up. I tell my students, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. The paradox of education is precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. Moreover, I am cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and states. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an escapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. We have waited for more than 340 years for our constitutional and God-given rights. Perhaps it is easy for those who have never felt the stinging darts of segregation to say, wait. When you are forever fighting a degenerating sense of nobodiness, then you will understand why we find it difficult to wait. There comes a time when the cup of endurance runs over and men are no longer willing to be plunged into the abyss of despair. I hope, sirs, you can understand our legitimate and unavoidable impatience. To those who have said, be patient and wait, we have long said that we cannot be patient. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. We are tired. We are tired of being beaten by policemen. We are tired of seeing our people locked up in jail over and over again. And then you holler, be patient. How long can we be patient? We want our freedom and we want it now. Freedom is an endless horizon and there are many roads that lead to it. We must walk arm in arm with other men and we must struggle toward goals which are commonly desired and sound. We must give and lend to the youth for stronger voice and encourage their individuality. We must look to the schools and constantly work for their improvement because that is where the future leadership of this country will be coming from to a large extent, particularly in the black communities. For we know now that victories are possible, though the struggles they demand are long and arduous. So let our elation merge with a pledge to carry on this fight until a time when all the antiquated ugliness and brutality of jails and prisons linger on only as a mere, a mere memory of a nightmare. For our vow will be fulfilled only when we or our children or our grandchildren will have succeeded in seizing the reins of history, in determining the destiny of mankind, in creating a society where prisons are unheard of because the racism and exploitative economic arrangement which produces want for the many and wealth for the few will have become relics of a past era. It seems to me always in the process of social change that there are three jobs to be done. One is the job of analysis, and I'm sure you people are deeply involved in that job. There is secondly, the job of synthesis, seeing the nature of the future society, but in a way which is not so rashly blueprinted that it becomes silly. The third job is that there would be in motion in that society an element to make politically possible what is foreseen. Look closely at the present you are constructing. It should look like the future you are dreaming. 
These were the words of Toni Morrison, Martin Luther King Jr., Angela Davis, James Baldwin, Shirley Chisholm, Bayard Rustin, and Alice Walker. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Rumi. Thank you.